It won't be long until our county fairs will be here and all exhibits will be in place. The fair is for the whole community to gather and we look forward to all the fun that the fair brings. But we also want fair visitors to learn while they are there. One way that our 4-H's and Extension Homemakers accomplish this task is through an educational booth. Today we will be going over the components of a good educational booth and how you can assure that the audience gets it hook, line, and sinker. Now let's take, now let's look at educational booths and fishing. Educational booths and fishing? How in the world does that relate? Well, let's say that our audience is our fish. The first thing we need to know is what type of bait we need for that particular fish. Our bait is our theme or message. You have to decide if the booth is going to be educational or promotional. In Benton County, the booths are educational, meaning you need to inform the public of an issue or you might want to persuade them to adopt a particular method or idea. Oh, I remember the one we had on how to sneeze correctly. You know, into your sleeve instead of your hand. Yeah, that's a good example. You also want to make sure your bait is timely and important for your audience. Remember that the fair audience is the general public, not just the 4-H'ers at the fair. But now that we know what we want our bait to be, how do we get them to stop and look at our booth? That's the fun part. You want to make sure you present the bait correctly. You want to attract the audience's attention and lure them over to take a closer look at your booth. Does that mean to have lots of lights and sounds going on? That sounds like a lot of fun to come up with. Yes and no. You can use light, motion, sound, and color and size to attract attention, but using too much of this can distract from your bait, not attract their attention to it. Once you have their attention, you want to come up with the title and put it in the right placement. Your title is generally larger font size than your supporting text, and is usually on top of the board. You then need to look at the design of your booth to see if it flows and is easy to view. Remember, people read from left to right and top to bottom, so you want to make your board reflect that. Put the most important things first. When choosing colors, use complementary colors or contrasting colors. Keep it to two to three colors, such as a background color, a text color, and a highlighting color. Pay attention to size and placement, and that the visuals are easy to read, and it's a clear and concise message. The last thing is you want to make sure to reel them in by looking at the overall effectiveness of our educational booth. You want to only cover one subject. On average, someone will only spend three to five minutes looking at each educational booth. We want a message that is accurate, concise, and simple. Don't clutter your booth with unnecessary material. If you ask yourself these three simple questions to see if your booth is, a, is effective in educating the public about your message. One, did you learn something? Two, do you have the desire to know more? Three, do you want to take action? If you answered yes, then you are well on your way to a great educational booth. Let's take a look at our scorecard that you'll be judged on as we review. Choose a great bait with your theme or message with a timely and important issue. Use your presentation of your bait to attract attention with the title good design, and printed visuals. Now reel them in, keeping your message accurate and concise and simple for an effective educational booth. Keep these tips in mind as you are preparing your educational booth and you will reel them in, hook, line, and sinker.